Oh, hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the 1973 Honda CB504 Cafe Racer Bill. Chop, chop, motherfucker. In this video, I'm going to be upgrading the front brakes. This is the last video before I actually ride this bike again. So it's really exciting to get this done. Before we do this front brake upgrade, we're gonna need some of these parts that just were delivered yesterday. So let's open these up. In this box, we have the new front brake master cylinder. Couldn't believe it, but both the brake lever and my new clutch lever were only like 25 bucks on eBay. Then there's one more thing. This is where the actual upgrade comes in. I am replacing the old stock rubber lines with stainless steel brake lines. These are way better because they can't expand like the rubber lines. After they get old, they start expanding and that leads to at least a 50% loss in brake hydraulic uh, pressure for the brakes. So that's no good. You want full pressure to operate your front brake caliper and this stuff will help me get that. It's a complete kit for upgrading your whole system to stainless steel brake lines. And this is the shortened kit since I'm using aftermarket handlebars. There's four into one on eBay, who is the seller I got this from, also sells the stock length kit. And then the final part of this upgrade is a set of semi-sintered front brake pads. These are from Too Fast Moto. I'll have a link to these too. Front brakes can save your lives, guys, so make sure to invest some money and time into making them work right. In the last video, I installed this cool headlight, the speedometer, and these turn signals on this bike. And it was all very cheap, very affordable stuff from eBay. But I think I actually found good stuff from eBay. It's all metal. None of this is plastic. So if you want to check that video out, I'll put a link up here or in the description. In this video, we're upgrading the front brakes. So let's get to it. Since I'm putting a new master cylinder on this bike, we're going to go ahead and remove all of this stuff because I'm re actually replacing the throttle and the controls too. So let's go ahead and get this stuff off. All right, we're all ready for the new right hand controls. Got that old garbage out of there. If anyone wants to buy this on eBay, check the link in the description. All right, I've got the whole front brake system removed, the master cylinder and lever, then the rubber hose, and the other rubber hose, and then this silly steel brake line. This is an also an upgrade because we are eliminating this silly steel brake line. Let's go ahead and just start disassembling pulling the old brake lines and everything off. So there's the caliper, and then I'm gonna pull the hoses off of this union. I'm pretty sure I gotta use this. Okay, there we go. We've got the brake hoses, the union, caliper, master cylinder, all disassembled. These brake pads still have a good bit of life left on them, but I've already got new ones, so we're definitely replacing them. But how? How do I replace them? Oh, we gotta pull these bolts out, of course. See if the old impact can handle it. Yep, she can. Yes, that one's tighter for some reason. Yeah, that was tight. Holy crap. Okay, so there we have brake pads, the back caliper plate, the mounting bracket, and then the piston. Okay, now I'm gonna clean up the caliper and get it all ready for reassembly. All 
Alright, we're all ready for reassembly. It is rebuild time. I don't know why I said that so weird. Rebuild. Okay. First things first, I'm going to compress the piston. Let's see. Let's see what comes out. Well, it compressed pretty easily. That's all the way compressed. Now let's install the new brake pads. Doing this with some brand new mechanics gloves so I don't get my skin oils on the new pads. So this side with this little nylon washer thing goes in the piston side. It's a nice tight fit. And then this side goes on the other side and there's a little cotter pin that goes in to hold it to it. Stick that in there. Bend the tabs down. There we go. New brake pads installed. Now we can reassemble the caliper. Goes like this. And the bolts go in. Tighten it up. Now it's time to just put this puzzle all back together. We got all these little pieces. And I have no idea how they're supposed to go. This is gonna be fun. Okay, so there's two bent ones, and then one straight one, and then there's three banjo bolts. So this fitting obviously goes in here. Before you guys say you need Teflon tape on the threads or anything like that, these fittings are all flared, as well as the actual caliper inside itself is flared. So we'll just thread in this adapter here. Get it good and tight. And then the long hose goes on the other end. We gotta connect up to the union. So when the union was installed on the bike, this is gonna be facing down and this is gonna be facing back towards the gas tank. And then we're gonna use one of these angled ones cause it's gonna have one kinda angled down towards the brake caliper. So I'm gonna grab one of these banjo bolts, some copper washers, and it's gonna go like this. That up. Then I'm going to use the other curved one to angle up and left. Then I'll get the short hose and connect it up the top of this fitting. Then this fitting is going to connect up to the top of the hose. And that end is gonna connect to my master cylinder. Master cylinder already has its own banjo bolt, so that means we have an extra one. There we go. Now the last thing to do is get this installed back on the bike. Okay, I'm gonna start out by installing the new master cylinder. Then I'm actually gonna have to disconnect this union in order to get it through the forks. It's gonna go like that. In order to install the union, I gotta remove the headlight. Hmm, I just realized, I think it would be better to have the angled banjo fitting on the top and the straight one on the bottom. Now we have to install this union to the lower triple tree clamp with this bolt and then there's this wire connector thing and I'm not sure what it's supposed to, which wire it's supposed to hold, maybe the headlight wire. I'm sure we'll figure that out later. All right. Now we can install the brake caliper, but first we gotta disconnect this brake line because that's actually going to go inside the forks and then this little mount on the fender holds that. The bolts for the front fender actually hold the top of this mount and then this goes to the fork tube. So hopefully that fits on the disc. Yep, fits on the disc. So let's go ahead and slide this over. Okay, there we go. And we can reinstall the brake hose.
Oh, this is gonna be painstaking. Gotta tighten this down with the wrench, so <laughs> can't fit a socket in there. This is one of those times when I wish I had one of those ratcheting wrenches. Finally got it. And then this big bolt goes through the bottom mount on the caliper. I think I can actually snake a socket through the wheel for this one, yep. And then there's just one more bolt and that's the adjustment screw that goes through this side. Then there's a spring. And this is actually an adjustment screw to adjust the whole caliper movement side to side. So I'm gonna leave it pretty loose for now. And then there's this nut that goes on. Got a little notch for a flat head on the end. So hold that steady and tighten that nut down and then we're good to go. There is also this little plastic guard shield thing that I think goes like on the back like that, but it doesn't really look that nice. And all the other CB500s I've ever seen don't have this installed. So I think this is just one of those parts that most people just leave off. So I'm leaving it off. The next thing to do is get some fluid in the brakes and bleed them. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the bleeder valve here. So now we gotta get some brake fluid in the system using DOT3 brake fluid. We'll go ahead and remove the screws on the top of the master cylinder. Let's get some fluid in there. Just gonna fill it up. Fill it up like halfway. It's gonna take a while to get the fluid to start flowing all the way down. It's got a long way to go. Well guys, eventually my camera just got tired and fell asleep on me, so you didn't see it, but it was amazing. I was just standing around doing something else and fluid came pouring out of the bleed screw. So I guess gravity just worked the fluid down through the lines and I was bleeding it and I, I think I got most of the air out, but just in case I didn't, let's top off this brake fluid and then loosen up the bleed screw and give it a few more pumps. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got all the air out of the system. And lucky me, looks like the brake fluid is just at the correct level now. So I'm gonna replace the cap. And I think that is a done deal. We still gotta test it, of course. Let's see, do we have front brakes? Heck yeah, we do. Feels like it's sticking a little bit. Let me try adjusting that adjustment screw a little bit. Let's see if that helps the sticking. Oh yeah, that feels better for sure. Still sticking a little bit maybe. But heck yeah, we got front brakes again. There we go. That's gonna stop so much better than it did before. I know this was kind of a short video. The next one is gonna be the first ride after reassembling this whole bike. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on the next video where I'm gonna be riding this bike. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace out.